Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube Live with Exam Revision on Junior Cycle Home Economics with Amy Cowan, where we'll be looking at digestion and associated exam questions. Digestion is also known as the Alimentary Canal, and whilst this is a Junior Cycle Home Ec chapter, it also links in with Junior Cycle Science and is actually quite um, similar. Make sure to follow us on our social media. So we're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and we are on YouTube. Check out our YouTube channels to see um, past recordings. Um, there are recordings put up every Saturday for free. So today's plan, we're going to look at digestion and associated exam questions. So digestion, our learning intentions include defining the digestive system, knowing the difference between chemical and physical digestion, also sometimes is called distinguishing between, being able to label the digestive system and identifying the functions of the mouth, esophagus and peristalsis, the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine and the rectum. So first of all, what do you know about digestion? I would always get my students to write down a couple of pointers beforehand and then revisit it later to see how much you have learned. It's a great way of visualizing how much progress you've made throughout the chapter. So digestion. Digestion is essentially the breaking down of food so that it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So in home ec, we look at nutrition, so we need to know how all this food we are um, taking into our bodies is actually broken down and utilised for our body. So digestion involves both physical and chemical changes, which we'll be looking at in more detail. So physical versus chemical changes, you could be asked to tell the difference or to distinguish between the two. Most people think there's only one sort of change, but there's actually in fact two. So physical change, um, if you look down here at this nice little picture, you can see um, a roll. Physical or mechanical changes, you can see where it's broken up, whereas the chemical, you can see that there is, for example, the representation of a 3D model of a carbohydrate molecule. And there is um, a digestive enzyme, which is demonstrated by scissors. And basically the scissors is going to essentially chop it up. And this is done via chemicals. So physical change or mechanical change means food is broken down by a mechanical action. Whereas chemical changes, it's brought about by enzymes. So enzymes are something that speed up a reaction without being used up itself during the process. In the case of um, this chapter for home ec, we'll be looking at salivary amylase. Um, and we'll look into what enzymes are and their specific role or purpose or function um, throughout this video. But the picture below is a good way of um, visualising the information that is presented um, in front of you in written format. So enzyme. An enzyme speeds up a reaction without itself being used up during the process. So it brings about change without itself being affected. There are many different types of enzymes. In our case, we're looking at salivary amylase. Some people call it amylase, some people call it amylase. It's the same as tomato versus tomato. As long as you can sort of spell it, you will get the marks for it. So conversions. We know that protein, carbs and fats are macronutrients, where the biological function of protein is for growth and repair. We know that carbohydrates break down into three different types. So you have your starch, your sugar, and your cellulose, also known as dietary fiber. Um, and essentially they are used for your cellulose is for to prevent constipation, sugar for energy. Um, and then if we move on to our fats, we know that fats are necessary for energy. And they also insulate delicate organs such as the kidneys and the intestines. And whilst there are 
most of the time we associate fats with being a bad thing, they are actually needed, but just not in too high of a quantity because overconsumption leads to obesity. So you need to be able to know what they are converted into or broken down. So this will be linking into those macronutrients. Also at junior cycle science level, it's linking into um like the building blocks. So you're looking at, for example, what a protein is. So it's essential, so the basic most unit most simplest part of a protein is an amino acid. In some cases you might hear it shorthanded as AA, whereas in carbohydrates the most simple form is a simple sugar, um, in our case glucose, so C6H12O6, which is um, a byproduct of photosynthesis, so that's how green plants um, make and use um, let sunlight to turn it into food for themselves. And then fats are broken into fatty acids and the glycerol, which forms a triglyceride. So this is really important and does tend to um, confuse students. Especially when they use terminology such as converted to, instead of, for example, just saying straight out, what is it broken down to or what is the most basic unit? So the digestive system is also known as the alimentary canal. It means the exact same thing, but it can confuse people. So when you're studying this chapter, you should probably put the two names that the chapter is associated with at the top of your page. So for the sake of junior cycle home economics, you need to be able to uh, label a very basic digestive system. You need to know the order of it as well. By knowing the order of it, of it you're able to visualize and you're able to visualize the pathway of food to the digestive system how it is assimilated and used up and then transported to other parts of the body so for example here we have a way of remembering it so we have um, a mnemonic so m o s s l or um, so for example, thinking of green moss and the L and or so left and right, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it does help students remember it because it's so out there. Um, so we have M for mouth, O for esophagus. Esophagus is quite a tricky word to spell. And in science and home ec, you'll never be Dr. Marks for misspelling something. Um, as long as the examiner can sort of understand what it is, you're going to get the marks for it. So we have mouth, esophagus, next up is our stomach, followed by our small intestine, followed by our large intestine, and then finally our rectum. So this is about as much detail as you would be required when labelling the digestive system at junior cycle level um, for home economics, and it wouldn't there wouldn't really be that much more difference um, for science as well. So this will be good. Um, video to revise over that will both you know take off two chapters for two subjects which is always very nice so moss m-o-s-s-l or mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and rectum so you can see if i go back here now the way it's labeled so we have number one is m for moss meaning mouth number two is just here and that is your esophagus number three is your stomach then we have um, number four is your small intestine. Then we have number five is your large intestine. And then number six is your rectum. So there are many other organs associated, but you just need to be able to label those key ones and know basic ideas of the functions of the other associated organs of the human digestive system. So what happens in the mouth? If you have a look at this GIF on the right hand side there, you'll be able to see a person that's eating pizza. You see the pizza going in the mouth, they're chewing away at it with their teeth. They also have um, their tongue, which is a muscle, which is, you know, pushing the food around. You can see kind of like liquid and that is your spit, which is scientifically correct terminology is salivary amylase. So the mouth helps us to digest food in another way. If you remember back to the start of this um, video, we had mechanical and we had chemical. In this case, we're looking at mechanical slash physical, where it's breaking it down via the teeth. So you have your um, 
incisors, your canines, your premolars, your molars, and then in some cases you might have wisdom teeth as well, and they help to break down the food, whether that's by biting down or tearing or chewing or crushing food. So then we also have our chemical digestion via our salivary glands. So these produce saliva, which we know as spit. Saliva helps to break down food chemically. It contains an enzyme which speeds up the reaction without itself being used during the process and in our case is called salivary amylase and this is your chemical digestion and um, yeah once you're able to explain what happens and um, you should get full marks key terms would be for example physical chemical and um, enzyme and salivary amylase essentially if you get stuck and you can't remember that just think of what happens when you put a piece of bread in your mouth and think of the process of what happens until you know it goes in your mouth and you're eating away at it and then you swallow it down so this is a very relatable chapter as a lot of it you should be able to you know at the beginning of it visualize it and then there's a lot of like visual aids here to help students of all abilities and it's particularly good for um students who like visual images so the next one here is the esophagus, okay, um, it is a tricky one, it's O-E-S-O-P-H-A-G-U-S, -E but as long as you can somewhat spell it, examiners will give full marks. So you'll see on the right hand side there is a GIF which is about to restart now, and you'll see the piece of pizza which is now called a bolus. And you see the way it's been pushed down and it kind of looks like there are like two knuckles and they're pushing it together and pushing it all the way down and it goes from the mouth all the way down to this j-shaped organ called your stomach so the way it is being pushed down is that's called peristalsis and essentially it means that you can actually eat upside down now as from children we're told not to do that because you'll choke but actually scientifically you can't actually do that so function which means job or purpose it moves fruit using muscles which is called peristalsis from the mouth to the stomach so if you can't remember a function you need to go back here to labeling it and you know that each of these organs is between another organ so for example the mouth you know it brings food to the esophagus we know that if we're talking about the function of the esophagus it brings food um, from the mouth to the stomach we know that for example the function of the stomach is to bring food from the esophagus to the small intestine the function of the small intestine is to bring food from the stomach to the large intestine the function of the large intestine is to bring food from the small intestine to the rectum and then the purpose of large intestine is to or to the rectum even, of, is to bring uh, food into the rectum and then the rectum is what expels the waste. So if you can't remember the function, if you're able to label it, you'll be able to tell me where this organ is and what where it brings food from and that will actually give you some marks there. So everyone that can label it should be able to be able to give a function. So your esophagus um, basically brings your food um, via muscles from the mouth to the stomach peristalsis is the muscular movement of the alimentary canal so essentially it's how the muscles move and it's like kind of like contractions um, and they move so it's a constant um, thing uh, just like the way your heart is constantly beating your muscles are constantly pushing okay um, and it brings food down to your stomach so you will need to know what peristalsis is it is a tricky word if you're able to name peristalsis when you're talking about the esophagus you will blow your examiner away and they will you know um realize that you have studied and you do know your work and you will uh, you know be able to achieve the higher merit even the distinction level for um this type of exam question so we've gone from the mouth to the esophagus and now we're moving down to s which is the stomach so this is what the stomach looks like and um, it is a j-shaped bag so this is a cross section of the top right so if you'd cut it right in half you'll see the way that there is like an entry up here and then there's an exit down here and that there's it kind of changes shape and that there's liquid in it and that there if we look down here there's many different layers 
So your stomach is made out of special cells. So you should have learned about cells in junior cycle science. This is what makes up all different organisms. So everyone's made up of cells, which then forms, you know, like your your organs. So like your your skin and your esophagus and your stomach, which then forms, you know, associated systems like your digestive system. Um, but the really cool and fascinating thing about the stomach is that because there is a really, really um, acidic um, liquid in there, um, and this is due to your gastric juice, so it would have a pH of somewhere between um, 1 and 6. It means that your stomach is actually constantly eating away at itself because of the specialised cells. They're continuously regenerating, so they wouldn't be like the skin on your on your face or your fingers that you know when you cut yourself it takes a couple of days to heal this is like constant okay and it means that you're never going to get a hole through your stomach and um, because if you know the juices did seep out you would you know um, cause a lot of permanent damage so we have here the function or the purpose of the job is where food is churned so essentially this means you're mixing it so if you think of like a bag and you put I don't know, like water or milk in it and you're shaking, shaking, shaking. This is what's happening, okay? It's churning, just like the way um your milk is churned into whey and curds into cheese, okay? So this is where it is mixed with gastric juice, okay? So gastric f coming from the Latin term um to do with the stomach. So the enzyme, which brings about change without being used up itself during the process in the gastric juice is called pepsin. P for pepsin, P for protein is how my students remember it, and it helps to break down proteins, okay? So it breaks them or denatures them down into their individual parts. So when you're breaking down a protein, you're converting it back into an amino acid. So it's, for example, if you think of the protein as a big burger, the amino acid is the tiny little bits you've chewed up. It's easier to for the body to use up the tiny little pieces in a big huge chunk of burger and uh, because there's you know a smaller surface area and um, so the fat melts in the heat of the stomach because the stomach is quite hot we all know that body temperature is between 36.5 and 37 degrees celsius your hydrochloric acid which um, is an acid which has a ph a very low ph of approximately two to three kills any bacteria that may be in food so you're linking back to your food safety and hygiene chapter and your microorganisms so this would be a defense mechanism of the digestive system so if you do eat food that's contaminated it will potentially at this stage and um, destroy any microorganisms um, and in particular your bacteria so you will be getting E. coli so your Escherichia coli and um, your Salmonella and Campylobacter poisoning. So food stays in the stomach for one to four hours so it is a slow process the food gradually passes into the small intestine so it starts up here coming from the esophagus moves very slowly down here and then moves out here and the next there is like this little we'll call it a spinster so it's kind of like a little um like a little doorway and it opens and closes allowing a certain amount in and out so it's not a constant open flow of um digestive juices coming out it has to be you know controlled otherwise they won't be properly broken down um, and yeah, then it means if they're not properly being broken down, it means that you know bacteria is not being potentially um, killed. Um, so then it passes out to your small intestine. So that's why if you know what's between the esophagus, you know that the stomach is between the esophagus and the small intestine, you can give that as a function and you can get marks there. So next up is our small intestine. So your small intestine, the function is to connect the stomach to the large intestine. So we have, we've done M, O, S, S, we're on our second S now, which means it's carrying food from stomach to large intestine. So if you can't remember any of the next few scientific um, bits, at least you should be able to say that it connects the stomach to the large intestine. So some marks are better than no marks. It contains two digestive juices. So we have our pancreatic juice and our bile. So our pancreatic juice is what's coming from our pancreas. It contains the enzyme. So enzyme speeds up the reaction without being used up itself during the process. In this case, the pancreatic enzyme breaks down your protein, fats and carbohydrates. 
Um, so these are your macronutrients. Your bile is made in your liver and this emulsifies your fats. So this is a scientific term to mean it breaks down fats. At junior cycle level, it is perfectly adequate to just say breaks down fats. So if you have a diet that's really high in fat, you are going to, and your your liver isn't functioning properly, the bile duct um, is what carries the bile into um, the small intestine. If you don't have um, enough bile being produced, the fats are not going to be broken down in the body, which then are going to lead to, to know, all kinds of other different types of problems and lead up to a build up of cholesterol in the body, which is like a plaque, a waxy substance that gets, you know, surrounds your arteries um, and it basically clogs them. It means that the oxygen and blood um, flow are inhibited and, you know, the oxygen can't flow around the body which can cause to, to you know, um, a heart attack. So you're linking back then to your special diets chapter. So the enzymes in the intestinal juice complete the digestion of these nutrients and so they can, you know, be fully absorbed. So this would be an important one. Whilst there is a lot of information there, at least if you know that it's between the stomach and the large intestine, you're getting some sort of marks. So you can see here, um, the pancreas is kind of like a leaf-shaped organ. Okay, and then up here you'll see the big um, liver, and you know you can see the two lobes, um, and you can see there this is your gallbladder, and this is the um, the bile duct, and this is where the bile comes out, and this is where the pancreatic juice comes out, just there as the stomach is emptying, and it joins all together and joins the small intestine. So the small intestine is the smaller in diameter; it is longer. Um, but it's smaller and it's always in the inside, whereas the large intestine is visibly larger, but people tend to get confused because the small intestine, they think, oh, it's just going to be shorter. But in fact, they're actually referring to the diameter of the organ. So absorption. Um, is the passing of digested nutrients into the bloodstream. So this here is what the inside of your small intestine looks like. So this is the small intestine. If you were to, now this is just a, a model of it. If you were to actually get small intestine, cut it right down the center, this is what you'd be looking in at. Okay, so you'd have your um, epithelial cells there. And then inside you have these little things that are kind of like little tiny hair-like projections and they're called your villi. You do need to know what these are for junior cycle homic. Essentially, they remind me of when you go to pennies and you get a bath mat and they have like these little fluffy things um, and when you walk them they're like super soft on your feet um, and they're like yeah they're they kind of look like tiny little worms and basically your um, small intestine is absolutely covered in these and it helps to absorb the food so it aids with passing of the digested nutrients into the bloodstream so do you know when the proteins converted to amino acids and then this is to be transported all around the body because your whole body is going to need um the energy so that it can thrive so that is your villi or um villus so only occurs in the small intestine and um, sometimes they will ask you to distinguish between absorption um and it can be a tricky one for students to remember absorbed through the villi and this is what they look like and there's a really good blood supply there um, and this is what carries it you know throughout the whole body then so we've covered the mouth the esophagus the stomach the small intestine and now we're moving on to the large intestine and again it's to do with um the uh diameter and not to do with the actual length of the organ so the remaining nutrients here are absorbed so whatever hasn't been absorbed in the small intestine then goes to the large intestine so they're trying to minimize the amount of waste and making sure that nothing is wasted so your water is absorbed in this case vitamins b and k are manufacturers so if you're referring back to the vitamin chapter vitamin b is for general health and well-being it's also you know for energy levels vitamin k is for the clotting of blood and essentially the body has this relationship um where vitamins b and k are made in the intestine you don't need to know any more than that for now and um, it is looked at in more detail um more towards leaving cert biology end of things than leaving cert homework 
but you will blow an, uh, you know, blow away an examiner if you are able to say that B and K are manufactured or made in the large intestine. This is where your waste is eliminated. So what happens is we start off here. You can see the glands there. Food comes in here through your mouth, also known as your buccal cavity, comes down here to your esophagus, joins in with the stomach, takes its one to four hours, comes out through here, you have your liver, you have your gallbladder with your bile, you have your pancreas with your pancreatic juice, it's mixing together, comes into the small intestine, goes all the way around and comes out through here. This little vestigial organ is your um, appendix, vestigial meaning it has no, you know, no function anymore, but we still have it for some reason. It comes out through here, the food, and it goes right up here to the large intestine, and then it is ingested out through um, the rectum. So that's your large intestine. Um, high fiber diet is super important for the health of the large intestine. We'll refer back to that now in a couple of minutes um, just to remind you of how different chapters link in with each other and how they're all tied in together. So we've looked at the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and now we're moving on to the last one, which are our rectum, so our MOS L or. So the final one is our rectum. So the function is the elimination of feces, waste product or poo. You can call it whatever you want as long as you're not cursing in an exam because examiners don't really like when people put down um, curse words in exams. So call it feces, poo, whatever way, waste product, whichever sits well with you. So this is the last part of the digestive system. At this point, it means that whatever can't be used out is going to be pushed out. Um, and it's the body's way of getting rid of whatever it doesn't want and it means that the digestive system is now um, complete and the process is fully finalized so this is your rectum and that should be quite an easy function for everyone to be able to um, discuss in detail So you need to be able to tell the difference or distinguish between digestion and absorption. So digestion is when your food is breaking down or broken down so that it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So this involves physical and chemical changes. So for example, physical would be the churning of food in the stomach. It would be the breaking down of food in the mouth via your teeth. Your chemical would be, for example, your gastric juices in the stomach. It would be your um, salivary amylase in the mouth. Um, and essentially it's breaking down food. So you're thinking of the, the what's me call it? the role that we had at the start of this PowerPoint and where you're seeing it being broken down into smaller pieces, which means the body can then use, you know, um, those nutrients that are found within it. Whereas absorption is when nutrients are passed into the bloodstream. So this occurs in the small intestine and is absorbed through the villi. So this would be, if we come back here now, absorption is only found in the small intestine, not the large intestine. Okay, so only in the center here, and this is what your villi looks like, and your whole small intestine looks like that, essentially. So when your digested nutrients are passed into the bloodstream, so when your amino acids or your glucose or um, your triglycerides are pushed around the whole body in the bloodstream. And because it's through the blood, it's been transported everywhere from your genome, you know, your toes all the way up to your brain. So you need to be able to know the difference between digestion and absorption because it does confuse students as sometimes they can think it's the same thing, but in fact they are actually different processes that sound particularly similar. So next up, this was the 2022 exam, which I corrected as an examiner. This was part of a short question. It says there, question six, identify the correct word from the following list to complete each of the following sentences. The fact that it says identify means it's a short question, so it's just looking for a one pointer. 
So one word short and sweet. This will be an eight marker. So you get two marks for one, two, three and four, a total of eight marks. You'll see that it has the words amylase, pepsin, peristalsis and bile. And you must use those words to fill in the blanks. If you use any other word that is not listed out of those four, you will get zero marks. So even if you don't know the answers in this type of scenario, you should always guess it because there is a chance you could get it right. And there's nothing more that, that basically annoys an examiner than seeing a question like this blank because you do have a 25% chance of getting something right, you know? So first one is amylase because it helps break down starch in the mouth, okay? So your salivary amylase. So in this case, what I would do is I would cross out amylase out of my list. My next one is blank is the muscular movement of the digestive tract, which is also known as the digestive system or the alimentary canal. So in this case, I know this has to be peristalsis. So I'm then gonna tick off peristalsis off my list. The next one is blank, it's question three, begins the breakdown of protein in the stomach. So what I'm left with now is pepsin and bile. If I don't know the answer, I'm just going to write either one of those down. I have a chance of getting it right, okay? So I know it's actually P for protein, P for pepsin, and it's broken down um, there in the stomach. Um, the next one is question four. So it says blank breaks fats into droplets in the stomach. Um, and that is going to be bile. Now, the reason why this one is a different colour, the SEC actually made an error in uh, the 2022 exam. And so anyone that answered question four, whether you got it right or got it um, wrong for this question six, section four, you would have got the full two marks. So the error there is bile breaks down fats into droplets in the, it's not in the stomach, it is actually in uh, the small intestine um, and that's what was wrong there so anyone that would have got that wrong got that right in total so there was very few people that went wrong there now that would be you know it wouldn't be very common that the sec would actually make an error like that but you know and um, they did put their hands up and say look they did make the mistake so they you know marked it accordingly but this was one from last year and um, Last year, it only came up as part of a short question. It wasn't part of one of the more bigger parts of a longer question. So moving on now to sample paper. So this would be a question 12, which means it's a part of the long question. So the WHO, the World Health Organization, describes a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely absence of disease. Um, so A part I, label the parts enabled, labeled 1 to 6 in the digestive system. So we have a human there. We can see the digestive organs. You can only label the organs which have an arrow coming out of them and have a space. So it's labelled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the first one is mouth. Also, you can uh, call it the buccal cavity, but most of us uh, would actually just call it the mouth because that's the word which we would have, you know, learned from a kid. So next up there, um, what students particularly can find uh, challenging there is that it's not labelled according to the way in which the digestive system uh, works. So say we know that the food goes from the mouth to the esophagus, but here it's labeled one and then two's right down the bottom. So if you want in pencil, you can label the parts and then you won't skip any parts. So you could pretend that's not four and just go straight on and label that. So do whatever works for you and then label in pen afterwards then the bits that you do know and again just you know try and guess it if you can't there is always a chance so number two um is thin and is quite long so this is going to be your small intestine number three i can see is at the very end of the digestive system so i told my students to do for this question would be to write down the mos l or so they would have write down m o s s l or and then beside the m write mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum so they would have known that the last place here 
which is the last point of the digestive system, it would be the rectum and they write that down there. Next up we have number four and this is the esophagus. Um, again, if you wrote it with an E, you're still going to be sign fine. If you wrote it with an F instead of a PH, you're going to be fine. As long as the examiner can somewhat figure out what you've written, you're going to get your marks there. Um, number five, so that is your stomach because it is a J-shaped organ. However, I can see people, you know, potentially labeling it and swapping up the liver and the stomach by accident. So that's why I'd advise writing down your Moss LR to the side. Um, and you can write it to the side of the question or you can write it at the back where you get extra paper. And if you are writing stuff in the extra paper, please do make that quite obvious on the question. And then at the back, do write down, say, this is extra work from question 12, A part I. Don't just write question 12 because there are many different sections in the question 12 it just makes it easier for the examiner and a happy examiner to know is it going to you know less stress so they're going to actually spend more time um reading through it it's going to be make it a lot easier and clearer for the examiner next up then is our large intestine because it is actually visually quite um you know does a bigger diameter to it and um, so that would be those all labeled there now there's a second part to this question which we're going to look at and you have to actually read this very clearly because it is very easy to answer this question thinking you've got a hundred percent and actually you haven't got it right at all so we'll see here part two choose four and it's underlined in four and bolded other parts you have labeled and describe their function in the digestive system so there's actually two parts to um this question here okay so if you don't know how to answer this question you're kind of in trouble for this part of the question but what i would say to my students is highlight the key bits so choose meaning it's a short question, meaning you're just labeling something. So you're just getting, say, mouth. Um, you have labeled and described their function. So we're looking for detail here in the function part um, because that's more of a long question um, section. OK, but the most important thing is, is that it has to either be the mouth, the esophagus, the small intestine, small intestine, large intestine or rectum, which you're talking about. If you start talking about um, the liver, or the pancreas or the bile in isolation so by themselves and treating them as a single organ you're going to get zero marks in this question because the question clearly says it has to be from the ones you've labeled above so this is where people will fall down and this is why i always suggest you highlight the keywords because there are superfluous or extra information there that trips up students that they do not need to have there and um, so we have for example here mouth also known as buccal cavity my function so what does it do thinking of what happens when i eat pizza i put it in my mouth my teeth will physically break it down and chemically then through the salivary amylase if you can't think of salivary amylase just write down my spit will break down the food okay your esophagus now i've just labeled them different colors to make it easier to stand out so this carries food from the mouth to the stomach via peristalsis. And if you can explain what peristalsis or even name it, um, that'll, you know, make you stand out. So this would be what you'd looking for for maybe a distinction level. And um, so peristalsis is the muscular movement of the elementary canal. Next up, I've chosen the stomach. So the stomach churns food using hydrochloric acid. So HCl is just the chemical formula for hydrochloric acid, which is found in the gastric juice. Next up, I've decided to go with the small intestine. So this is where absorption occurs. So that'll really make you stand out. If you can't remember that, say that the small intestine is where food is carried from the stomach to the small intestine and then from the small intestine to the large intestine. It contains pancreatic juice, which comes from the pancreas. This breaks down your macronutrients. So these are your proteins, fats and carbs and bile which emulsifies or breaks down fats now that would be like a distinction level answer there down the bottom now just because i've decided to go with the organs in order of how the food passes to the alimentary canal doesn't say that you can decide to talk about the small intestine first or that or decide to talk about the rectum it's absolutely fine it's completely up to you but that's just how my brain works um, and i you know it might be easier to talk about them in order because you can visualize on the picture like what's happening but this would be like um the level of detail you would be required for this type of answer and usually the more information you give um the higher the marks you're looking at 
So again, just linking back to show you, and I will get to why I've come back to this, um, the food pyramid, okay? So down the bottom, we have veg, salads, and fruits. Food pyramid is a guaranteed um, on the first question 11, so the first long question. It came up as part of the 2022 exam, came up as part of all the sample papers released by the um, SEC and the NCCA and even in the exam paper booklets. So next up, we have wholemeal cereals and breads and potatoes. We have milk, yogurt and cheese, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, beans and nuts, fat spreads and oils, and then up the top foods, high in fat, sugar and salt. You'll find this on safefood.eu. You'll also find it on the exam revision website. So what we're particularly interested in in the case of this is our veg, salads and fruits, wholemeal cereals, breads and potatoes, and our beans and nuts. So for your veg, salads and fruits, we're looking at five to seven servings a day. Cereals, which are wholemeal, so the brown ones, and breads and potatoes, we're looking at three to five servings. For our beans and nuts, you're looking at two servings. So whether that's a handful of nuts or um, a piece of chicken the size of your pan. So the reason why we're looking at this is because they contain fiber and fiber is necessary to promote um, a good um, do you know, healthy digestive system. So the way you remember it is top to the floor except, except four. So you go six, five, three, two, one, one or less a day. OK, so you should have three out of four of the main food groups when you're designing a menu. So wholemeal salads and fruit five to seven servings a day. I think most people know this and it's drilled into you from primary school. It provides fiber. OK, so fiber for the digestive system is also called cellulose has many important vitamins and minerals which are low in calories provides vitamin c okay so we're mainly looking at the part that says fiber and five to seven servings per day and we know it's at the bottom your wholemeal cereals breads and potatoes so these are the best energy providers okay we're looking at this because it's high in fiber okay so again to promote peristalsis prevent or prevent constipation so you're looking at brown rice wholemeal pasta whole grain bread instead of your white rice white pasta and white Bread, okay whole grain breakfast cereals including porridge and potatoes with their skins provide more fiber so you should be choosing three to five servings a day up to seven servings for teenage boys and men aged 19 to 50 now this is more for the energy side than you know a healthy um bowel and um, okay three to five servings per day so a serving is this in general most irish people are shocked about this so a serving is 16 raspberries or six strawberries or half a cup or uh, half a cup of cooked rice so whether that's you know your brown rice or your you know your normal white rice okay um referring back to the carbs again for revision so we can classify it to sugar starch fiber also known as cellulose and roughage so in your cellulose and roughage you know fruit brown rice veg wholemeal bread all the stuff that's super good for us but a lot of people don't particularly enjoy so the body doesn't actually need to di digest the fiber it doesn't fully break it down but it is necessary to push all the food through and um, the digestive system okay so if a person is constipated it means they can't get rid of their feces and this means that they are lacking in fiber so it's very important in the diet aids peristalsis helps prevent um bowel diseases um bowel cancer heart disease and type 2 diabetes okay so how to increase fiber in the diet this is what's linking into the question which i'm going to show you now you're eating wholemeal bread and rice leaving skins on fruit and veg we're particularly bad from a young age removing the skins off apples when we actually don't need to do that at all and um, eat your five portions of fruit and veg a day choose nuts and seeds as snacks instead of reaching out for the chocolate add lentils peas and beans to meals they really do um you know bulk out the meal and they contain um low biological value protein as well so your rda this is what you need to know over here is for fiber is 25 to 35 grams per day so that'd be an important number to take note of again with um carbohydrates the only deficiency which meaning not enough or you're lacking is only with fiber and this can cause constipation bowel cancer and your type 2 diabetes all right and um, so here's a sample paper it's 
Part B says describe the four guidelines that could be followed to ensure a healthy digestive system. So this is why we have reviewed the celiac, or sorry, not celiac and um, fiber. Okay, so that we could get back to this point to show how the different chapters are actually all entwined. So for example, here you're eating your wholemeal bread and rice which prevents constipation and bowel disorders, you need to put that extra bit of information. Leave skins on fruit and vegetables. So for example, leaving skin on an apple. Eat your five to seven portions of fruit and veg a day. Refer back to the food pyramid. Choose nuts, seeds and snacks. Um, add leaves, lentils, peas, beans to meals. Okay, because they're a good source of fiber and LBV protein. So here's another past paper where it asks you to define peristalsis. So this is the muscular movement of the alimentary canal. We have another one here, which is a true or false. So high fiber prevents colon disease and it does indeed. Labeling this again. So in the case of A, we're not going to look at this now. This is actually from the old junior cert, but it's still very relevant because the digestive system never changes. So um, what we're looking at here is B because that pertains to the digestive system. So your stomach, C is small intestine and D is your liver. Okay, so in this Saturday session, um, we looked at the digestive system and associated exam questions. In the 2022 exam, it came up as a short question. No one can guarantee anything, but there's nothing to say it can't come up again. It does tie in very nicely with a lot of the home economics chapters, and it's also a bonus, you know, revision for junior cycle science. Just to make you aware of our um, exam revision website, so examrevision.ie. So Junior Cycle Home Ec, under each of the chapters, we have video tutorials, quizzes, presentations, self-correcting quizzes, which is a pure bonus. And um, so this is how I lay it out according to the same way it would be in most of the textbooks. So we have strand one, food, health and culinary skills. That's where today's one would have come from. Strand two, responsible family living and strand three, textiles and craft. So say if you were to go into this one here um, on special diets and you're looking at obesity and dental disease, you would have the PowerPoint here, which you can look at for as long as you want you also have essentially me teaching the chapter in less than 10 minutes you can pause and rewind and go at it as many times as you want again you have a self-correcting quiz which does give you the answers at the end so you can help you to revise it and it's you know very suitable for both students and teachers so thanks for listening to this today make sure to follow us on our social media so we're on twitter Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel every Saturday. New um, Saturday session sessions are released every Saturday. There's loads of past um, Saturday sessions on Junior Cycle Home Ec. Give us a, a look up. Um, so thank you for coming today to Junior Cycle Home Economics with Amy Cowan on digestion and exam questions.